ghosts, goblins, and goodies. It's spectacular time of the year. Hello, I'm Lee Lopez with the City of Deltona. Welcome to Turf Courts and Celebrations. It's October, and October means spooktacular. Spooktacular is going to take place on Friday, October 23rd, and Saturday, October 24th this year. So this is the 14th year that we've been doing this. It started in 2001. My guest today, Steve Moore with the City Parks. Steve's our Parks Director, and Scott Ruland with Deltona Water. Scott's the manager. Both guys play pretty important parts. Obviously, Parks are in charge of the entire event, and Deltona Water, for a long time, has had a rather large, spooky hand in keeping people entertained at Spooktacular. I said Spooktacular will be the 23rd on Friday, the 24th of Saturday. Uh, with this event on Friday, Steve, I want to ask you, Friday night, that's a special night. It's uh, geared towards which group? Well, Friday night is more of a tea night, mm -hmm. and the event will be held at Dewey Boster, okay. um, off of Saxon Boulevard. It's more, it's more uh, dedicated to the teens, mm -hmm. whereas Saturday night's more a family night, and uh, that's zero more around the families and the young kids. But we're finding out from year to year that people are coming out both nights because they really enjoyed the first night, and they want mm -hmm. more of it on the second night. So on a Friday... What typically, like somebody who's there for the first time, what would they see? Well, they'll see a haunted trail, which will really be scary. There'll mm -hmm. be some chainsaws going on there. Okay. And they'll see uh, Deltona Waters' version of a really scary entity down there on the other end of the soccer fields. And <clears throat> there'll be some hay rides. Mm -hmm. There'll be some games on Saturday night, but mm -hmm. not on Friday night. Um, contests on Saturday night, not on Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll just be, they'll see vendors mm -hmm. that'll be uh, offering things to buy and sell. There'll be uh, a multitude of food vendors mm -hmm. out there too with all different kinds of goodies and groceries to get. So, will there be any type of music entertainment on Friday? There will have, we'll have a DJ on both nights mm -hmm. and uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be spooky. It's what okay. it's supposed to be, scary. <laughs> Now, fri uh, the Friday night event, that starts at what time? It starts at 7 o'clock. Uh, it goes from 7 to 10, and then Saturday night will be from 6 to 10. Saturday, as I mentioned, is more of a family night. Mm -hmm. It'll be a cool night for everybody. Okay, now with Saturday night, like I said, somebody who's never been to Spooktacular, what would a family, what would they expect what, you know, when they show up? Well, the first thing is we, we have this event, and like you said, it's what, our 14th year? Mm -hmm. And we, we have it at a soccer and sports complex, which consists of six soccer fields um, and uh, two multi-purpose fields and a football field. Mm -hmm. So we transform this park into a, an entertainment venue for, the, for Friday and Saturday night. And uh, we have, as we mentioned, we have something to eat. We'll have games throughout the weekend, and then we'll have a trail, and we'll have sort of a haunted area by Deltona Water, which Scott will want to go into. Okay, now with children, because like you said, that's going to be a that's a family night. Right. Uh, somebody brings their you know their their kids. The kids are going to be in costume. What is their typically? The kids some to do? kids do come in costumes. Mm -hmm. They do. They do show up. The parents feel this is a good opportunity mm -hmm. for them to do some form of a trick or treat, and that's what we do on Saturday night. We'll have games set up over on one of the uh, multi-purpose fields. Usually we have about eight or nine games. Mm -hmm. We're gonna probably cut it back a little bit this year because we're having a hard time getting all the volunteers to support that. But uh, we'll, we'll expand, not the number of games, but we'll make the games a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, so that'll be a little bit better for us to maintain and manage. Um, <clears throat> the kids will give candy, we'll give prizes. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be, it'll be kind of cool for the kids to show up in there in their costumes, yeah. Now, are there, will there be bounce houses? Because people we will usually have want a couple to, bounce mm -hmm. houses. We we contract with uh, 
a bounce house firm, and they usually put three or four of those bounce houses out. That's a big draw. That's mm -hmm. a big draw. And the lines are real long for that. So we'll do that on both nights. Uh, typically in the past, because uh, Saturday night's more of a night for families, I don't mm -hmm. believe we've had the haunted uh, hay ride, which we have a, a tractor. We make it up mm -hmm. with, uh, with hay bales, and then we take a multi-purpose field, and we light it and all the way around the field and we have different figurines blow ups mm -hmm. and it's kind of cool for the kids and then it can parents can accompany the kid on the on the trailer and we usually we have two tractors and two trailers one taken off and another one taken right behind mm -hmm. it so we'll probably do that on saturday night we probably won't do that on friday night now saturday what time does everything get started we're going to start saturday at around six okay so we'll have an extra hour there so it goes from six till ten. Six till ten right Parents with younger children, are they? Is it recommended they show up about six o'clock, or is tip? When does when do things really? Well, start? Well, typically we don't really start anything until around when it starts getting dark. Yeah, because that's mm -hmm. when the scariest time is. Uh, okay. And uh, you know, I mean, they can uh, you know hang out, listen to some music, we'll have some things going mm -hmm. on there. But around dark's when we start getting the trail out. People line up. Mm -hmm. They line up pretty early. Yeah. So. At that time, it starts getting dark at around what, six thirty? Yeah, six thirty somewhere seven. in there. I know it's starting to get dark now at around seven. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're we're looking at uh, probably another month. I think we lose like eight minutes a day or something yeah. like that. So, so you know, at about six thirty uh, is when you want to get lined up because mm -hmm. the lines are real long. And, well, speaking of lines, and this is more, <laughs> I guess, like for planning purposes for for people who want to show up. As far as parking. Now, the parking is just limited to what's on site at, yeah, the, at the park. Yeah, parking in Dewey Boster Park, we have about 400 spaces mm -hmm. right now. We have uh, about 200 concrete spaces, mm -hmm. and the rest is sort of like uh, off, off parking in grassy areas. What we will do is we will go ahead and line those and dedicate, tell everybody where the parking area is. We usually do that in paint, so you can see that. Mm -hmm. And um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We don't have, it's not like the 4th of July where we have people actually showing you where you can park and telling you where you can park. It's more of a first come, first serve. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that you do get there a little early. Vendors will start stirring up for the food probably at about 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And we usually have a dedicated vendor parking area. And we'll, we'll block that off and have all our vendors get all their stuff to mm -hmm. set up, and then they can go park over in the area where the vendors park. So parking is going to be an issue. Also, um, over there on Maximilian Drive, yeah. back at the end of uh, the park there, there is a Catholic church. Our, I think it's Our Lady of the Lakes, mm -hmm. and uh, they have a parking lot there. They do charge a nominal fee. I think it's $5. That's what they've done in the past. And the Volusia County Sheriff's Office will protect that. They're all over there. And they'll also be over on Dewey Boster as well, mm -hmm. making sure that everything goes okay over there. They will be controlling the traffic in and out. Um, it's a right turn in and a right turn out. Okay. So um, they'll be controlling that. Um, and uh, it'll just be a fun time to really get scared and bring your family out and have a, mm -hmm. great, have a great evening. Now, for somebody who shows up... Uh, I guess it's like, what can they bring? Can they all show up in costume? Or is, do we encourage well, them to we, show up you know, you know, dressed up? Some people come in costumes. One yeah. of the things that we've been having some issues with in the past is we would prefer that you don't bring your pets out there. Good point. And we will have somebody mm -hmm. at the front that will be checking that. As soon mm -hmm. as you come in, we'll tell people that uh, this is not the night for pets. Mm -hmm. And But invariably, always somebody doesn't get the message. Yeah. We'll ask them politely to please either take their dog home or make arrangements mm -hmm. not to bring their, their pets to the, to, the, to the site. Because we do have an ordinance, a mm -hmm. city ordinance, that does talk about um, pets being in, um, on a leash and uh, they're really not allowed on our athletic sports fields or in the concession area. So um, also, you know, like we talked about, get there early if you're going to mm -hmm. find a parking space. You may yeah. want to even drop your car off early in the afternoon, get your space. We'll have about 25 uh, designated handicap parking mm -hmm. spaces too. We'll take some areas. We'll dedicate that with the sign, and those will be done too as well. So, now, um, is there anything else that people need to be aware of that they shouldn't be 
that they shouldn't bring into the park. Well, fireworks is another thing. We okay. always have some people that always try to slip a few of those things in. Okay. Um, no alcohol either. No correct? alcohol. Okay. Yeah, that's, this is a family event. Mm -hmm. That's well, all of our events in parks and recreation. All of our special events are family events in which there's no alcohol mm -hmm. allowed in the park. And you said there will be food vendors on site, right? They will. They'll okay. be there. Our concession stand will be open. We'll have a variety of different things to eat. Um, and uh, so, you know, bring a little bit of money if mm -hmm. you'd like to uh, grab something to eat and spend the night in the park. And speaking of food, because I know that this, this is something that's handled by the clerk's department, but it still is part of the entire night. Uh, it's kind of a strange segue into food, but it's a food eating contest. Yeah, they're, they're going to have some contests. Uh, I think it's a, a freaky food freaky contest. Freaky food and uh, uh, pie eating. Pie eating. They and do that for up on children the and adults. That's right. And there's also a uh, costume, costume contest, contest for children mm -hmm. and adults. So there's an example of why you need to wear a costume. Mm -hmm. We have some pretty cool ones too. They've shown up, and some of the people have been really amazed at some of the things. And usually our commissioners or maybe our city mm -hmm. manager will, will uh, Jane Shang will. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we'll, we'll judge the, the costume contest. And it's always fun to watch that. Now, whenever you have a large crowd of people and you have people in, co in costume, invariably somebody gets lost because that just happens. Yeah. What, do, what would somebody do in case of... Well, we'll have a lost mm -hmm. and found tent and it'll be an area which will be right behind the stage. Mm -hmm. And that's also where our information booth will be if anybody needs any information and I believe that's where you also sign up for the contests mm -hmm. will be right there it'll be a big it'll be a big area you can't miss it. it's it got a city of Deltona logo on it which I believe is your tent mm -hmm. now if there's tent. an emergency is that where somebody would go like say if for whatever reason they need to <coughs> get in touch with a sheriff's officer or anything that would be a recommended place right? <coughs> yeah now with spooktacular we had mentioned that it's been around since 2001, and it started out fairly compact, I guess you could say. Yeah. How, uh, since <coughs> you've been here, have you seen this? Have you seen Spooktacular grow? I mean, it, its footprint oh, has it's gotten a, appreciably bigger. It's evolved into a multi-cultural uh, type evening or weekend, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, it started out with a kids' trail, separate kids' trail, which Deltona Water helped us scare kids. We also had a smaller adult trail, and we manned that with probably about five or six different uh, little um, areas where we could scare people out. And over the course of the years, it's moved on down to another area of the park, and uh, it's uh, gotten into a bigger trail, and also with a, with a Deltona water support, which is actually the main attraction along with the trail, mm -hmm. um, we run a lot of people through those through those trails and and their uh, their little scary area. I'm, I'll let Scott talk about that. Yeah. Now, when and this is a good point to bring up. Uh, last year, do we know about how many people visited uh, on both nights? Yeah, we have a count. Um, we have a count. I would say we had probably about fifteen thousand people on Friday night and mm -hmm. about twenty five on Saturday night. Wow, that's that's a lot of those are a lot of feet. Yeah. <laughs> Now, with something <laughs> yeah. this large, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And I know the Parks Department takes a lot of the responsibility because you guys have a lot of the work as far as preparing the park. If you can just let me know what all goes into this, because this isn't something that can be done in two or three days. No, we, we actually have a warehouse where it's on site out there at Dewey Boster, which we integrate with our turf management supplies and, mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. We'll have about 14 different scenes out there that our guys in Parks and Maintenance will set up that will be scared. We'll have scary music. We'll have tombstones out there. We'll place about uh, 100 people on the trail in different costumes that will scare people. that will jump out of a bush somewhere mm -hmm. and just scare you. We'll have some ch chainsaws, not real ones, but, mm -hmm. you know, toy ones that, that, that sound off and really get you going. And they'll be people that will actually have a makeup artist mm -hmm. that will come and will um, may put makeup on some of our costume people and the volunteers that will uh, help out. And then we'll have some security on the trail too mm -hmm. to make sure there's no issues there. 
So we'll have about 14 scenes. We, we may, may try to see if we can add one or two more, mm -hmm. but it weaves through an area that uh, is, it is definitely dark. Yeah. And, uh, it, it'll definitely be an opportunity mm -hmm. for us. And, and kids, go, they just can't go through it one time. Mm -hmm. They've got to go through it two and three and four times. We see the same kids come back around again. And then they line up, and mm -hmm. the lines are forever. I mean, they run the whole length of two soccer fields, which is uh, 360, mm -hmm. 720 feet long. So Now, with the size of Dewey, because last year there were a lot of events that took place, uh, I guess you'd say like on the primary soccer field area, but then there were the games that took place over in the multi-purpose field. So when will people start seeing those areas as far as like getting everything set up? Is that... We'll start setting up that uh, the, the, there'll be races. We'll be mm -hmm. we'll have games. We'll start setting that area up. Uh, well, Friday night we'll, mm -hmm. we'll be set up uh, for for our entertainment and our trails and uh, scary experience down there where Deltona Water will be. But uh, we'll start setting stuff early up in the afternoon to be ready for the crowd when they come in. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to have everything set up. And we 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 need some assistance from some volunteers, which we always need. And a lot of our programs, without the help of the volunteers, we couldn't really run them. So uh, it's essential that we do have all. We're going to need about 180 to 200 volunteers to help this event. And we get the support usually from the high schools because they mm -hmm. have to do community service hours. So, um, and then we, they bring the paper to us, and mm -hmm. Marlene Brown takes care of all the volunteers for the games, except for the, the contests, and the, Joyce uh, Raftery does that with the contest on the stage Saturday night. So uh, it, we'll have, we'll need a lot of volunteers to help us pull this event off. And to volunteer, they would contact your department? They contact correct? our office, 386-878-8900, and you can pick up community service support form from the high school, mm -hmm. bring that into us. We have people that, that have been with us now for 14, for 14 years, the same people come back because they <laughs> have such a great mm -hmm. time. They Scaring really people on the it. trail? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, speaking of scary and tradition, that leads me to you, Scott, with Deltona Water. You guys have had a pretty pretty good hand in uh, making spectacular an attraction that a lot of people don't want to miss. Right. And mm -hmm. it all has to do with scaring the pants off of people, essentially. How did this get started? Uh, I think Parks and Rec had it first with the Haunted Trail. Mm-hmm. And I think it was around 2004, they asked us if we'd like to get involved, which we did. We kind of threw something together kind of on the fly, but it was a haunted tool shed. Okay. And uh, Steve's right, the lines out there are pretty long. And what we put together was relatively small in comparison to what it is today. And uh, we felt after the first year that we were involved, we enjoyed doing it. It seemed like everybody out there had a great time. And we wanted to make it a little bigger. Um, that way, the people waiting in line, there was, you know, was more time in mm -hmm. an attraction. And that's kind of been the genesis and the progression to where, to where we are today. Every year, you try to make it better or bigger, and you try to, to, give, to give back to the, to, the, to the people that come and, and to the event, you know, that another, the next level. What's the next level? So it started off as a haunted tool shed. Yeah, I think it was only maybe 10 foot by 12 foot. Mm -hmm. It was really small. And what did it, I guess you say, what did it grow to from there? From there, I think the second and third years, we, we did a haunted house. So we kind of took that 10 by 12 and blew it out to, I think the rooms were 10 by 20s. And we did a couple of rooms. And the next year, we did a couple more rooms. And uh, it's to where it is today. Um, Somewhere along there, I think we did that for three or four years and mm -hmm. kept getting bigger. I think it went to 24 feet by like 60 or 80 feet. And I think it's the Pirates of the Caribbean was a big movie at the time. Mm -hmm. So we kind of took the haunted house and we made it look like a pirate ship. We put a, a you know a mast up and a mm -hmm. sail and and a, a captain's cabin off the back and kind of cantilevered it and some cannons coming out the side and uh, we did that for several years mm -hmm. and built a lot of different props and things to go with that theme 
Now, with something like the ship, because I remember seeing it last year and the year before and the year before that, and every year, like you said, it, it grew, something else was added to it, there right. was another enhancement, there was another scare zone. Mm -hmm. To build something like that, how long does it take? Because I mean, it doesn't just happen overnight. No, it, it's been a progressive thing over time. So uh, what you see out there, there are actually panels that we, that we assemble on site. So the panels are stored during the year, and we go out the week of the event that Monday and we'll start erecting and assembling the panels are all bolted together. So it's, you know, it's kind of grown over the years, but it's really kind of a, a system where you, it's, it's bolted together. So it takes us about a week to assemble it. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I think with the total attraction we have there, it's, it's over 3,000 square feet. Pretty good so, size. Yeah. Now, do you guys come up with these ideas throughout the year, or do you just like wait until like no, September? We're, we're, and then we're, thinking, like... we're thinking of ideas throughout the year. There's no doubt about that. Um, and so we do it collectively. We, we work with other departments here for, for some of the ideas and materials, whether it's the sign shop down at Fleet, or if it's uh, business and planning with, with maps and prints, or. Mm -hmm. or uh, help from Parks and Rec, uh, clearing out a site because we want to do a trail kind of feature. Um, so it takes a lot of interdepartmental help, um, but we're working on different props and ideas and concepts all year long. So someone says, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this? And then we'll try to figure out how to do that and, and see if we can make it happen, which most times mm -hmm. we can. It's okay. been a team event. Yeah, yeah. it is. No everybody, everybody helps out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, that, that's kind of a cool thing. Yeah. And the one thing that makes it available is the funding for the event. We really haven't talked about that. Mm -hmm. the, the commission is behind us 100%. They provide the resources and we get the job done. That's mm -hmm. basically what we do. And uh, each year it ends up costing us a little bit more money, but they see the value in the event. Of, of a kid smiling and mm -hmm. enjoying themselves and, and the feedback that commissioners get later on and, you know, after the event's over with. So that's kind of a neat thing. That's where we get our enjoyment from. Yeah. And, uh, but if it wouldn't have been for the commission to provide the resources to mm -hmm. us, we wouldn't continue to be able to think of these events and yeah, think of the things on the fly for everybody mm -hmm. else. But it is a team event, and Scott's right. It does take us. It'll take the trail um, about a week and a half for us to set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> sometimes we have a little vandalism out there. Yeah. At nighttime, too, mm -hmm. we have some, some, some get, issues yeah. with that. They get a little bit too much into the spirit. <clears throat> uh, now, with the ship, from what I remember hearing, <coughs> the ship, I guess, it has sailed its last uh, we port. sunk. We sunk the ship last year. <laughs> the ship is done. Mm -hmm. well, so. One of the things I noticed about the ship, because I don't want to get away from this, this is one of the things that I noticed when I went on the, the trail last year. You added, I guess you said, like more enhancements to the line just to get in. Yeah, yeah. The, the lines, like Steve was mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, I mean, there could be a long wait mm -hmm. for the attractions. So we kind of used a section in the woods in the trail um, kind of as a uh, preamble mm -hmm. to the actual event or, or uh, to the ship itself. So we have a little area staged in the woods as the line comes in. There's a, I guess you refer to them as a scare station is yeah. maybe a good way to put it. There's a scare station there and then uh, a small haunted trail mm -hmm. section and then right. you would go into a couple <coughs> other little stations and yeah. then the ship. Now and can, so we've done away with the ship, and yeah. we've kind of reconfigured mm -hmm. those scare stations with a, a new concept. Now, like what Steve was saying, like with okay, when you have something like the trail or you have games, it takes people to get it done. So with the haunted venue, I, I guess it's the best way to describe it that you guys have. Who, who are the people behind the scenes, and who are the people with the, the makeup? Wow, I mean that's a lot of people. Is it staff? Um, so I, I guess instead of calling it venue, we can just mm. say it's going to be a walking dead warehouse. Okay. Okay, so it's a warehouse we're going into. Um, and the, we need at least, you know, with the number of rooms we're looking mm -hmm. at and the, the size of the production, we probably are going to have 30 to 35 people mm -hmm. in costume. 
And then there's all the support people that go yeah. along with that event. There's electricians and and other other support staff, mm -hmm. um, and they've got to be there to make sure everything functions and runs smoothly. It's all the effort behind the scenes yeah. that the general public never sees. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. That goes into making the event successful. It's not just the people in costume that, that goes a long way, and, mm -hmm. and they I think enjoy it uh, quite a bit when they scare people. But it's also the all the uh, all the support staff there. Now, if somebody wants to, <coughs> if they want to help you guys out, if they want to volunteer, now would they contact? They would the go department? through. They would go through, through parks the park and department? rec, and oh yeah, that, that's the way to go. Is uh, they have the proper forms and documentation, okay, and things like that. And we're we're willing and always able and ready to take on volunteers. Yeah. And just the way, just from the description that you gave me, this sounds like something. And not to exaggerate, but it does. It sounds like something that would rival what you'd see at. Halloween Horror Nights or Hollow Scream with all the details. So it's going to be a pretty good scare for whoever walks through. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've done the pirate ship so many years mm -hmm. that um, you know, every year you added a couple little touches and nuances and mm -hmm. some detail. So we knew that if we wanted to do something new and fresh, you know, um, that we're going to have to really, mm -hmm. going to have to really turn it up a notch to kind of compete with with the ship in the years past. And uh, I think uh, the people I work with, I think they've done that. And you set so. yourself a really high bar, but it sounds like you're gonna, yeah. sounds like you're gonna hit above that bar. Yeah, we're, we're hoping that the, uh, you know, that whole Walking mm -hmm. Dead uh, concept kind of maybe draws out some new people, mm -hmm. maybe some new people that want to volunteer mm -hmm. and help out because it's a different concept. It's not a pirate ship now. It's more uh, geared towards a Walking Dead kind mm -hmm. uh, concept and. Not to give too much away, mm -hmm. but you know, there's a FEMA response team yeah. on site, and there's a viral contaminant that you know Dewey Boster mm -hmm. becomes ground zero, and it's spreading from there, and it's into a warehouse. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think uh, people are going to enjoy it. Hey, we got a lot of surprises. Just very quickly, if somebody does volunteer and they <laughs> say they want to volunteer and work the trail, usually what? What do what what can they expect? Are they going to be put in costume? They going well, to wear? Well, yeah, we have uh, we have a couple makeup artists mm -hmm. that'll, that'll draw them. That'll make them look cool. We have costumes. We have a wide variety of array of costumes, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll put them out there on the trail. One year back, we had it was foggy out there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and so it was, it, cool. it was there was a little bit of mist in the air. It so it created it. that atmosphere mm -hmm. of being like Scott said. Ground zero, you know, <laughs> a doom and gloom kind of thing. So it really added to the overall flavor of the event. It was cool for us. So, mm -hmm. you know, and with the time change coming up, you know, it's going to be a little bit darker earlier. We're ready for it. We're ready for it to happen. But we never know what's going to happen until it happens. That's yeah, true. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Spooktacular. Time to get your scare on. Hmm. Thanks, guys. You bet. Thank you.